I'd like to call to order the special meeting of the Frankfurt Plant Board. Um, today, uh, we have two items on our agenda. Both are informational items. The first item is to discuss and present the 3D re renderings of the reservoir and the cost implications of different construction options. Is that you, David? Strand. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, David. <laughs> the basic models are all uh, PDF format. You have to open them in a plain Jane PDF viewer. Um, they will not open if, like, uh, if you have an Exchange viewer or something like that. It has to be a plain PDF. Uh, when you open a document. I believe you, you have to entrust the document. I believe you've already done that with all these. Uh, probably a yellow ribbon will pop up on top. Can you make that bigger? And can we can you get the mic? Yes. And we can you speak to the mic a little bit. Too, all right, I'm trying to be able to see the buttons too. Um, this is basically how we'll open up, but you can zoom in, zoom out, manipulate. Uh, I'm getting ready to show you that. There's a lot of buttons up on top once you activate. So as you can see, you can zoom in, you can rotate, view from all different directions. Whoops. I believe right now it is set on, when you open it, it will be set on the solid outline. Uh, if you click this box here and go to solid, it gets rid of a lot of the extra black lines. You also have lighting options. Uh, click the various options. It comes in as bright lights. Daylights will darken it. There's various other lights. White lights makes it darker, which is odd. Bright lights seems to be uh, probably the cleanest look. There's also a blue box up on top. You can toggle between an orthographic projection, which is the default setting, or if you, oops, wrong button. If you click on it, it changes it to a perspective projection so it basically takes you more down in line with the grade so you're looking at it almost as if you were standing on the ground like I said you can zoom in you can rotate from all the different positions this button over on the left allows you that's like the master button it allows you to rotate in all different directions Oops. The next button over allows you to rotate, so whatever is the focal point of the PDF will allow you to rotate about that focal point. Works a lot easier if you actually have it straight first. And then the button with the X allows you to shift based on whatever view you were on. And I guess one key thing I forgot to mention is you can click on this button here and it allows you to see the full width. So maybe that's what you were asking. That looks better. <laughs> At least understand what you're looking at. Yeah, so now you get a better, bigger view. And again, you can rotate. One thing that I have found that is useful, since the tank is essentially the focus point here, is you can set your camera location. And that is achieved by clicking this camera button. It will pop up another window 
And the feature that I've been using is the align under alignment, select three points. And then you will select three points along a, usually just the, I just use a line. So I'll set my first point, say right here at this driveway, the center point, which is, I believe, your focal point, and then another point about equal distant from the other side. And that will allow you, once you rotate, and get things lined up as how you would be viewing them. And you can go to this button here, which is the spin button. And it allows you to spin around the tank and see various perspectives from all around. And once you get where you want to be, you can zoom in a little bit to an idea of what you see when you're up close. Selected something. And then you can spin out, zoom out. Obviously, this is the flat roof option uh, with the variable grading around the tank. So as you can see on the head end side here, the grading is down low and then it it uh, slopes up as you get around the tank. So there is a little bit more visible on this tank. But again, it's behind the head end side. And we did add some conceptual landscaping trees to help screen it, screen the tank uh, as you know, as you look view it from the sides. Obviously, there's not as many trees. We did not show any of the landscaping associated with the head end building, and we still have the existing parking structure uh, shown in the model. And then I realized that this tower is not shown correctly. It does come to a point, but that point is the actual height of what the existing tower is. So uh, same way with the the head end building, that is the model that we received uh, from the uh, head end building consultant. So they are to scale. The tank is drawn in. Uh, the 7 million gallon tank, uh, approximately 185 foot diameter. Uh, the overall wall heights uh, for the flat roof, the wall height is 37 feet. And I'm trying to remember the exposed heights. I think it was 28 feet at the high side and approximately 12 feet exposed on the, um, the side that's graded up higher. Are the satellite dishes drawn to scale on there? I believe they're a little bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think those came in quite yeah. right. There's limitations <laughs> in the modeling software. There was a standard um, cell that we could import. Well, maybe the plant board would put in satellite dishes that size. <laughs> and the big tall trees, are all the trees going to be that big when they're planted? Well, we don't have landscaping planted at all. And do you have an image that has both tanks in it? No, we only did the single tank options. The future tank is. For the record, I asked for images with both tanks, but. Uh, we do have the other tank options as well. Like I said, this was the flat roof um, without a retaining wall. Oops. What's that say? This one's already partly set up. This is the 16th rise. This is a standard dome tank. 10th rise, my bad. So this so is the 10th. So are those houses drawn to scale? If the satellite dishes are not, what else is not to scale in there? Uh, everything else should be to scale. All the house outlines were um, pulled off of uh, 
LIDAR data that the city had? been developed uh, there's three different roof options obviously the flat which is what you're looking at now the standard one-tenth dome roof and the lower dome the one sixteenth dome so you've got those three models and there's two grading plans associated with each one of those roof types you got with a retaining wall and without a retaining wall so there's six different models so we're just happy to be looking at, at one particular one of them at this time but we're going to make those available for people to look at at the convenience in the convenience of their own home. Okay. And I had also asked because those look, I mean, when you compare those trees to the homes, those are some big trees. And I had asked if some of these, some of the trees are existing, they are depictions of existing trees out there. I had asked, you know, once that goes in, and then there are, I'm sure, limitations with utilities underground and, and things like that. We've got to keep in mind that these trees are just conceptual at this time. Well, we, haven't, we haven't got to that point in the design with, with the landscaping portion. Now keep in mind that strands, they're responsible for the landscaping plan associated with the reservoir. And GRW is responsible for the landscaping plan with association with the other project. So you know, we've got to get far enough along in that design process. This is just conceptual trees. Uh, we looked at a model without any trees, and we knew that that wasn't going to be realistic as well. So we directed Strand to do the best job they can, they could, with putting some conceptual trees in there. David, could you maybe just maybe you could answer how to follow up on Miss Gray's question? How close can trees be planted to the reservoir structure? I mean, how many feet or you know? I, I mean, obviously, I, trees grow in the roots and so forth. How close could the trees? be planted as a general rule? I would think it depends on the species of the tree, but I would think you'd want to be able to get some lawn mowing equipment in between the two. And trees have roots that grow way down. Mm -hmm. yes, a lot of trees do. So that might prohibit planting some trees. That would be a discussion that we would have to have between the tank manufacturer and what their recommendations are and the landscape, you know, the, the people responsible for the design of the landscape. But are you putting trees on the hillside in your diagram? Because they're doing the trees for the reservoir part, right? I mean, that's what yes. you said. They're doing the they land. are later, okay. later in their design phase. Okay. This is just conceptual. Okay. This is, I guess, yeah. Think I guess of it as a... It's not close to the reservoir. Can you actually put a tree? I don't have a good answer for you. Well, I was asking him. Okay. Yeah, we don't have an answer for that either. We, need, we would have to get with the tank manufacturer. I guess one thing I would point out, though, is, you know, the purpose of the trees is to provide screening. You would get more screening out of your trees along the property lines where they're closer to the viewer than if they're closer to the tank. Yeah. So, so my concern, just to be, you know, put it as simply as I can, is that I would hate for us to be shown images that show a whole lot of greenery and trees and then four months down the road or whenever we next see a landscaping plan because this landscaping plan for the other side has taken over a year it all of a sudden we learn that because of pipes or because of the tank or, or what have you that we can in fact not have any trees or maybe two trees so so that's a concern I, I hear you say that you can't answer that right now I hope that you will get with the tank manufacturer 
and get that question answered as quickly as possible, that you will look at where the pipes are and try to get answers to that as soon as possible. I, sus I suspect we can be closer than you may have may anticipate because uh, there is actually a tank that was built in Lexington by the sewer department and they do have landscaping trees on that berm. But I can't be any more specific than that. I, I wasn't involved with it. David. Yes, ma'am. One more thing. I don't, I don't know uh, what your all's plans are for planning and zoning, but there is a landscape committee that you will have to go through to get landscaping approved. And I happen to be on that committee. <laughs> <laughs> But just to be clear, I mean, you know, these were put on here as, you know, representative screening, and we don't feel like there's anything that would preclude just general appearance with the finished product. It, it, they were put on just to show what it, it could look like. It needs to be considered an artist rendering at this point. Sure. It's not designed by any way, shape, form, or fashion. But are we comfortable that it's at least representative? No. Absolutely not, because, I mean, we're dealing right now with the fence issue that we answered your questions about what fence we wanted almost a year ago in January of last year. And at that time, and since then, we have been asked in November to change the top to save you all $200,000, which we agreed <coughs> to. Now, we can't have a brick base on the fence, which is what we were promised. And uh, so, you know, I, I understand utility lines being not very, very deeply because I have underground utilities. And I had to jackhammer my backyard up in order to meet coke. And it seems to me that the plant board ought to be jumping on getting theirs up to coke because you can't plant trees over that and expect those roots not to tear it up. So it, it, it just seems to me that, you know, that's a pretty picture. Yeah. And, and that's nice. I'd rather see it without anything because we do not have any faith that they are going to plant run tree. I mean, they have shown absolutely no willingness to do anything that the city asks or that we have asked or that we have been working on for two years. Herbie, when we have I the, we can turn the, the utilities map from GRW that gives us some sense about the placement of the, of the of the wall, would we be able to derive from that map the where available planning spaces would be and what we'd be able to pl place? What our constraints would be around that? I believe the answer is yes, but um, you know the site utility drawing is coming from the uh, civil section of GRW. Mm -hmm and they will have to get with the landscaping division. But yes, the landscaping division can look at the drawing and decide how close to the property line and how close to the lines and what can be planted. And from that, we should be able to drive some level of comfort as to what level of foliage we can yes. put on the site? Yes. And we feel like we'll have that this week? We'll have the drawing this week. Uh, the landscaping division has not been engaged at this point, waiting on a final decision on the fencing. Uh, I think Aaron Nickerson is here. <coughs> Aaron, when do you think landscaping could take a look at the uh, site drawing and give yeah. some? Uh, I guess where we're at right now, we've been waiting for survey crews to get done. They've been out there for multiple weeks getting parts and pieces between the rain and and others. But they got it all together now. Once we have that, I'll get into this when I talk in a minute a little bit more, but we'll be able to identify exactly what the ramifications are of the utilities to the fencing depending on where they go. That hopefully allows us to say, let's go with this fencing style. You know that fencing style, then we can develop a true landscape plan that works with that fence to help, you know, keep the keep the view, keep the integrity of the neighborhood and get some landscaping in there to, to help that. When we do that, that'll 
that'll let us know what size tree we can get in there, what type of growth we can have because of above ground utilities, satellite dishes, whatever else it might be. In there. So we'll have a pretty good range of size of trees. And when do we think we'll have some, you know, ballpark timeline when we can expect that kind of constraint? I think once we can, data. we can get an idea on which fence we're going with, I would hope it, it wouldn't take that much time to get the landscaping together. Uh, I think the biggest issue with landscaping is going to be putting it together and that meeting with everybody to, to buy in on the, the, the idea of it, let them speak a little bit to things we may have not seen from the neighborhood's perspective and pull that together. But I would hope. I hope we'd be able to pull the landscaping once we know the fence style. Well, then probably a, we can have to be, you know. I see. Do be, we able, to, be able to have a preliminary meeting so we can present that plan. But, but prior to that, could we get some sense of what our constraints are just based on where the utilities are placed in the short term? Yeah, I think we could give an idea. And I, I think the preliminary plan that we developed See. You can kind of see on those renderings that we did a year or whatever or so ago it was to the to the city the kind of scope and scale of stuff that, that we thought we could get in there between shrubs and trees. So given that preliminary design work that's already happened, do you feel like this is at least in the ballpark of being representative of what, what could happen? On the, yeah. It depends on the tank manufacturer and all that, like David is saying. But you know, a 25 or 30 foot tree, you're probably going to need to be 15, 20 feet away from the tank because of the roots. Right, but just depends on the very above ground if there's anything specific to that. But I think overall, in a lot of that area, we can get some relatively substantial trees in there. <coughs> I Tank would manufacturer, if he says you got to be this distance away or I'm not giving you a warranty, that's going to be where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> and we think worst case we'll have those numbers somewhere within two weeks of when the map is complete. I think for everything that we have uh, that's in the part that we're looking at as far as sight lines for elevations and staying away from above ground utilities and all that, we should, we should be able to pull that together pretty quickly as far as getting a final layout. give you a rough idea of, of the type of planning that we were doing before. And a lot of that, a lot of that you already had. But, uh, but uh, I know. we can probably dig that up because it's got lost in transmission. But okay. But we'll, yeah. we'll do what we can do to get you as much as possible, as soon as possible. But I don't, I've been holding our landscape guys off until we know what the fence is. Because certain type of trees and bushes are going to be useless if you got a 40 inch masonry lawn. Is he talking about his landscape people starting off with the plan that they have already presented, which was rejected overwhelmingly by the neighborhood, which included not one single evergreen tree. It was mostly flowering dogwoods, which are beautiful, but are not anything that's going to hide anything. Right. Well, my goal was not that specific. I was trying to get to how long it would take us to figure out how representative our shading was. Right, but what I'm saying is, if they are starting from that point, you all need to remember what that landscaping plan showed, and it was um, fifty thousand dollars more than what the plan we worked out with Inside Out Design was, and it didn't have any trees that were of significant height, and not one evergreen. Right. Well, you know, uh, you know, none of this is at the point where we are moving forward with any plan. You know, we, everybody I think realizes I that no one's, no one's agreed. And look 
back at those plans so sure. you're familiar with what GRW suggested okay. before. Thanks. Mr. Bob, I just had a thought that I think would be important sure. to bring up. Uh, we're going to have substantial more green space mm -hmm. after the tank, one side of the tank is demoed. So we have, we'll have more green space up there than we currently do right now. So it should offer us more abilities to do some additional landscaping. So. What? I think the part you're trying to hide, like Mariah, and they buried the lines, but they haven't taken them down, so I'm not real sure which ones we're using. There's not going to be able to plant anything right behind me that would hide all the concrete. What? So I know what you're saying about the green space, but it really isn't going to come into play to what you're trying to hide. Well, think about it this way. The berm as it sits today is it's the structure that holds them back the water. After the concrete tank gets built, that berm is no longer structural. So what we might have been afraid of to put a tree on the berm in the beginning because it was holding back water, it's just purely aesthetic at that point. So with the new des concrete design tank, we should ha have more green space to offer up for landscape. I'd like to ask a question. Even though you're not showing a second tank up here, there if, is if and when a second tank were to come in, would it sit at the exact same level as the first tank, or would it sit higher? It would be its uh, twin brother. In every way. I mean, that's probably 35 or 50 years down the road, to be honest with you, but that is my intention at this point. David, you know, whatever you your capacity estimate on how much on how much capacity we have above where we currently are with the seven million tank. I, I didn't bring it what about seventy percent? Over average demand. It, it depends on whether you talk about average demand or peak demand or historical peak demand. But we don't anticipate the need for a second tank for a very, very long time unless something changes. Unless you get one distillery, right? It depends on the nature of the business. I mean, distillery. it depends on, I mean, not every car manufacturer uses the same amount of water, so, you know. But, but we, we do have to consider even 35 years down the road or whatever it may be, we're making decisions now that are going to have an effect on the future. Perhaps mm -hmm. like and so your answer was, yes, it will be a twin brother, it will sit at the same level. That's my, that's what I'm anticipating, yes. But you may not be the one to build. <laughs> well, I'm sure whoever replaces me would take what it looks like into consideration. At that point, 35 years from now, that tank is still well into its useful life. So I would assume that the engineer that steps into <coughs> my place would, would take that into consideration and, and build one identical next to it. That's the way I would approach it. Yeah, there's two site grading plans and three roof options. Can, can you go through those fairly briefly with <coughs> showing the perspective of each one as we go through the way you sure. just kind of circle around at street level? Sure. Well, we've already looked at the, uh, this is the flat roof without the retaining wall option. So this is the standard dome, so the 10th rise dome. Option with, uh, without the retaining wall. Is that Tanglewood Drive? Is that view? Uh, I think it's almost at the intersection, I think. <coughs> yeah, so this is the reservoir roadside. What's that? I think that was from Alzheimer's Street. Just mentioned No, that's Reservoir Road there, I believe. Yeah. 
So there's the view from the main entrance. Well, there's an, uh, there's another option for a retaining wall. Excuse me? There, each roof option has two different grading plans associated with it. One with a retaining wall and one without a retaining wall. And this is the retaining wall? This, this is, is one with without. without. This is the 16th rise dome, so the low rise dome. Sir, how much of that is exposed now with the, with the retaining wall? Uh, approximately 10 feet. But then you've got the wall exposed. Yeah, is that the you normal dome that you just showed? You showed the regular dome. Is that the regular dome? With the no, this is the low, low rise dome here. Rotate around. And how, how much taller is the, low, the reservoir with the low rise dome? We have another slide uh, we can that has all three of them on it. If we Is can put that, if we can answer that question when we get to that <coughs> slide, would, would that be permissible? Okay. So I believe the retaining wall, the max height of the retaining wall is 18 feet right at the tower, and then it tapers down to nothing. Between between the retain at the top of the berm, between the retaining wall and the tank, is there room there for trees? Probably not trees. Probably nothing. Probably nothing substantial. Okay. From the landscaping side of mowing, is it better to have the retaining wall or not? I'm just curious. I mean, they don't mow the tank now. They used to mow that tank, but they don't mow that now. So is it easier to maintain it and they'll mow it more if they have a retaining wall versus not having a retaining well, wall? Well, the side slopes are changing with the retaining wall. The side slopes are remaining the same. Uh, if we're going to mow it, we're going to need some specialized equipment to mow it. Okay? Um, I don't think the retaining wall makes a difference one way or another on whether it's easier to mow or not, okay. personally. Now there's a, one thing that we wanted to mention here. If we put the retaining wall in, there's probably going to have to be a handrail at the top of it because it would be a fall uh, hazard. And you know, we couldn't get to that level of detail with, with this model, so. Can you show that ground level from hay, please? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. You're flying crooked. I can't tell. I got a different perspective than everybody else. <laughs> <coughs> What's that? Does it need to tilt? We can turn that podium over here if you want to. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> now I'm standing in front of everybody. What you need? Yeah, yeah. I mean, can, you, so many can you delete those 
Christmas tree. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inaccurate statement. Yeah. 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 Well, some of those trees are existing, and some of those yeah. are proposed. So, so I mean, it would be nice to know that right. the existing ones are there, and that you're not going to kill them by building the rest of them. Exactly. You can't really see how much of that dome you see because the trees are there. I thought there was a way to turn the trees off, but I can't find it. Is it, her, is it possible to consider repainting the head end green to blend in with the landscaping as opposed to standing out from the landscape? That's a masonry structure, and it's my understanding that yeah, you, can put, you can put paint on the masonry structure. You talking about the concrete or the brick? Both? I'm talking about, I really am talking about anything up there, a retaining wall, mm -hmm. head end building so that it blends in with mm -hmm. the landscaping as opposed to standing out from it. Mm -hmm. I think we can pick colors. I think we can pick colors for the tank, but there are more constraints on the tank than there would be for the head end giving heating issues that we might have with the tank. Is that correct, David? We, don't, we want to avoid a dark color just, at all. Just costs. brighter colors, yeah. yes. Dark, dark color. We want to avoid a dark color. On the tank. On the tank. It would, it would heat up the water. Okay, it could cause heat. water quality issues. I'm just talking about the head end and the retaining wall. I don't know of an, if an issue that would, we could make it UK blue or Louisville red. No. The, <laughs> no. 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 I understand. I, I don't know of an issue on the retaining wall that would limit us on a color choice. I think that would help a great deal. Can the uh, head end building be painted? Uh, yeah, it's like any masonry. I mean, it can be painted. Um, it's best not to for breathability reasons for the brick to allow moisture to, to wick out of it. Um, but you can paint it as long as you get the right primers and, and fillers and the right type of paint to put on there. You can do it. Uh, it probably means that you got a 15 or 20 year uh, maintenance cycle on it that you're going to have to strip it and paint it again because it'll start peeling off because because of the moisture and the salts that are in the, the concrete and the masonry materials themselves trying to push out of the material it'll start to uh, wow, for the first detract from the adherence that you showed us show in red brick rather than that we have now. I don't remember ever submitting anything red right brick. Uh, Your first renderings shown September the 1st of 2015 at the plant board meeting. Um, the, all of the renderings that you showed for that first month or so were red brick. Which, of course, is what the majority of the neighborhood is. Uh, I can't say for sure on that. I don't remember it ever being red. Uh, it was always that light bluff in the specs and the, uh, uh, well, and the drawings, all drawings. the renderings and everything we ever did were always that, that light tannish buff color. Now, the, the, base of the base of the building was always a darker color. It's always that darker grayish brown color. Well, but you showed the office part, in, which is in for it now. You showed it in your drawings in red brick. If you check your renderings, I'm sure you will probably find out I'm correct. Uh, okay. Herbie, could I ask you to put two things to check on? One, protecting customer confidentiality. If we could check and just get a ballpark, following up on Miss Waterfield's question, about how much ballpark, because we can't release, how, how much does a distillery use? We've got two here in town, just a rough ballpark of what, how many how many gallons of water does a distillery use a day? Because I understand we run about, our average, what, David, is about 8 million. So in, with the 7 million gallon tank, that takes us capacity-wise up to about 13, 14 maybe, roughly. Mm -hmm. 
historically your your tank size is a function of weather and peak demands mm -hmm. and a large water user like that is mm -hmm. probably going to be running three shifts a day mm -hmm. so they won't really be adding they may be adding to the base mm -hmm. but they may not be adding that much significantly to the peak well i guess the so I'm i think we need to be respond to is the question is if we got a major new employer and let's say it was a distillery that uses a lot of water how much of that capacity that 70 percent capacity up to seven million would that eat up i mean that's i think we need to be on you know answer that in terms of and then i think as fast as we can get Herbie an answer from, and we've used Crum, obviously it has to be bid, but they came in before. And if we can get that general question answered, if possible, this week, how close can you plant trees, large trees, close to, a, close to that tank? You know, with this type, in general, what would their answer be? May turn the grass like the topography off. Well, the whole tank. I think we have in one of the previous packets that was released in the last regular meeting actually has a picture <coughs> of, of an exposed tank, right? And we have a. We also have a plan and, and cross section drawing that he was going to show that has okay. all th the existing cross section and the proposed cross section and the, the three different roof options. Well, then maybe it's a good segue point to move to that before we move off of these drawings is there anything that the folks would like to see that that might not be wanting to lean into the computer renderings after the fact i have two questions so we're looking at with this right here 10 foot it looks like the exposed sidewall i, I think is what was said yep. and what's the existing exposure i know you got, i'm sure you guys have said it before yeah you want to comment on that, David, with the free board? It, it's over my head, so it's probably. I'm guessing it's probably seven feet. I can go up there and measure it. Okay. Um, the second one is the last. The last picture that we were seeing there was that the half dome or the full dome? Uh, this one. No, the one without the tree before this, right? Yeah, before this. Uh, well, you took the trees out. This is, I've been on the same one where I took the trees out. Oh, so this is the same picture. Is this? This is the, this half? is the half. This is the this is half. Okay. And how tall is that from the base? How tall is from the middle to the top? It was uh, 46. Half dome, 46 feet. And approximately, what approximately. And what is the tank that's there now, David? Well, that's not really a fair comparison because this one's going to be deeper in the ground. Are you, are you talking about? Five feet deeper in the ground. Say again? Five feet deeper in the ground is my understanding. Yes, ma'am. Um, we, we have um, a cross section sheet that has all the elevations on it. It would be much easier to compare between the three if you. You're bound to know how tall the tank is. The weighted the weighted perimeter is 35 feet, and you have to add the roof options on top of it. So each different roof option adds a different roof height. I understand that. Okay. But what I'm trying to ask you is, how does it compare to the height of what we consider the side walls? Of the reservoir at the present time. It depends on the grading plan. The retaining wall has a. No, the, I, wall. I, the one with, that we have right this minute. How tall? Is How tall is the it? overall height of the existing is 28. That's from the bottom of the inside the of it of to the, the top of the roof, is okay. right in the 28 range. Okay, and this one will be in the 35. 38 range. It would be the 35 side wall height. The water height, the water depth would be 35. Okay. So it would be 30. So the roof be option will take it 
and whether it's flat or, or, or the so, domes. So we're talking about uh, two, at least two feet taller than what's presently there. Yes. With, as I understand it, it, even if we went for the flat roof, you, it would have to, the sidewalls would have to be built up another five feet in order to put all of the structure inside. Is yeah, the, that correct? With the, with the flat roof, you end up going two feet taller than the domed roof to get your free board. So if we had, like with the retaining wall option, if we had about 10 feet exposed for the domed roof, it would be about 12 feet exposed for the flat roof. Okay. Is that? Yeah, that answers my question. Can you still go to that drawing? Where'd you have that saved at? Uh, I got mine with me. Yeah. It's Where's your USB port at? Back on the There we go. So this is basically a cross section cut through the tank, through the reservoir, the existing reservoir. So there's the overall plan, the existing reservoir. This is the North Basin, South Basin. Proposed tank location. There's the existing head end. The new one's over here somewhere. So that's what we're seeing down here is a, is a section cut along this red line. And then this is showing. So here's the bottom of the existing reservoir. It's the bottom of the proposed tank. Top of the existing reservoir is this gray shaded line. It's approximately elevation 813.5. The red line outline depicts the low rise dome. The green outline depicts the standard dome. And then this magenta line uh, is depicting the flat roof option. So with the two dome options, we got a roof edge of approximately 816. And then with the flat roof, approximately 818. And then obviously you can see the domes, they go up a little bit higher. So let's say like 827 for the 116th rise, the low rise dome. And then 834 and a half, give or take, for the standard dome. Ms. Waterfield, does that answer your question? Is that? So how much taller is the tallest dome than the existing structure? I have to do math. Is it 21 feet? Yeah, 21 feet. Okay, and the mid-sized dome. I can't Engineer do math that quick. <laughs> Was that 14, 13 and a half? Okay, so it's 13 and a half feet taller than what is presently there, even though the reservoir <coughs> is five feet farther into the ground. Is that correct? Yes, yes, overall it would be at the peak of the dome.
and you've got to move it 15 feet closer to my house. There's a head end building there too. Too. Isn't there a head end building there too? That's in her That's in between. It's, it's so. in my backyard. So you it's, won't even see it. It's 30 feet from my <laughs> property line and now Herbie wants to move the fence over more and give me two feet of ground that I can't plant anything in except grass. <laughs> and and a fence that's not going to have any of it. So um, I'm, I'm not looking at good options here. Um, I'm going to go to the bottom of the tank. So we're going to dig it five feet further down. Because the rock is compromised. Yes. Are we going to be, can we get through that five feet? Even? I mean, we, we don't yeah. anticipate any issues. It's weathered rock. Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, geotechs come in and look at it. It's weathered rock, and they're recommending that we take it out to get to a suitable bearing surface. We, we what won't. What happens if we get it? I can tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to do any blasting. Okay. I guess I was asking, one reason I was asking is if you can't, you hit there and you're going to have to blast. I mean, it's different than what you think. No blasting. So, so you can get two feet down, then does that just mean you're going to move the tank up higher? Mm -hmm. Whole ram. What? What did you say? Whole ram. It's mechanical yeah. removal. It's just like yeah. what? What was the utility that went around? Oh, it's yeah. that. AT and T is just like AT and T did all the way around. How long is all of this going to take? Nine months is estimated construction window. How much is the noisy part? Yeah. That's really what I'm And the dusty and dirty and the dust and everything. Y'all are always doing something <laughs> in our neighborhood. And it's not, it's really <coughs> not fun. I understand. We'd have to laugh or we'd be crying. Even you people dig and don't call first. And that's happened up there. Where lines have gotten cut. Telephone lines. We're trying to do this project a little different. Okay. So I mean, we're trying. Does anybody have any more questions on the 3D renderings in particular? I just want to make sure we get all that covered. Everybody's got a good view of what we're talking about with the rendering. Could we go back to your question on the construction, David, of the nine months? Kind of what do you what's the sequence? I mean, there's the, I mean, we're going to get the liner. The liner has to be put in the one tank. Mm -hmm. That's no heavy mechanical, right? No. Won't then, even, probably won't even know they're up there. Okay. That time. Then in terms of the next phase is what happens, what's of the phases, the liner, then what's the next phase? It would be demolition of the south basin. Okay, and then that? Well, dismantling. Would, is I mean, that, it's, I mean? It's earthen and, you know, the, the roof structure, so. Is that a lot of heavy equipment up there to do that? I would say, Alan, when you think of track hole, and some dump trucks. And about how long would that take? You have a good idea on that? I'm, a couple of weeks, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And then the next part is actually construction. And we had Crum in it when we met over at Franklin County <coughs> Career Tech. The actual construction of the of a tank itself, from when they come in, start forming the concrete, putting the floor in, start finishing, that takes. To be honest with you, I, I haven't thought of it like that. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at it as an entire project window. But in terms of sequence, and I think, does that answer, is that something you want answered is nice time frames for each kind of, if you kind of segment it in terms of liner, demolition, reconstruction, kind of what you see how that nine months breaks out. Because I think your question is, from heavy equipment, when it's up there, kind of what's that time sequence? Is that what you're? It's up. Okay. Is that? We, we can get that information. Okay. <coughs> now, again, these renderings are going to be made available on our website. Anybody has any questions about it? Give us a call. Oh. 
when once this tank is completed, then do you take down the other one? Is that part of the construction process? Yes, ma'am. Part of the nine months? Probably so. You know, there's a lot of things up in the air right now. The, when we say nine months, uh, could be longer if we're talking about the 16th dome roof. It's more complicated. It will be actually longer if we go, you know, if the flat row roof is chosen. Uh, remember there was a 1.75 million additional cost for the flat roof. A lot of that is labor, so I'm anticipating that the flat roof, if that's what is chosen, would, would take a lot longer. So the nine months that we're mentioning here for clarification would be for the normal dome roof. Without a retaining wall. And without a retaining wall, thank you. Because the retaining wall would have to be built after the tanks were the tank is constructed. When you say normal, do you mean the full dome or the semi dome? Full dome. Full dome. And these are just estimates. So. Okay. Mr. Roach has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see. Late. I'm sorry. So I may have missed what y'all already said. What's the how much? What's the difference in cost between the full dome and the half dome? Uh, there's no additional cost for the full dome. Gotcha. The half dome is a uh, half a million dollars more. Okay. And the flat roof is one point seven five yeah, million more. Thank you. So getting back to the question is will the second tank look like the first tank, assuming that it does, you know, we long term cost the we gotta double these things for the overall cost. Because whatever you do for one I'm assuming we'll do for the other. Well but if you wait thirty five years it'll cost <coughs> way more. <coughs> Thinking about rates thirty five years down the road. <laughs> and then the, retaining, the retaining wall option also adds, I think we came up with, was it? 320. 320, 350. And I think the check to take all this before the planning and zoning. That's being discussed, but to be honest with you, you know, we can't show up at planning and zoning with conceptual stuff. We have to show up with design. So, you know, yeah, we, you we've got to make a, a decision and we have to finish the design and get the plans to uh, to a degree that we can go to planning and zoning if that's what's decided to do. So, you know, the, the purpose of the meeting was to look at the roof options mm -hmm. and the grading. So that's what we try to do tonight. But we were talking about time, timeline, mm -hmm. time frame, and I'm thinking that's another step. That and that's another step that, that we have absolutely no experience with going through, so I don't know if that is a 30-day process or a three-month process. I have no idea. I'll be glad to give you any advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're still trying to decide whether or not you will go before planning and zoning? So do you know when that decision will be made? I think you want to, I think I mean tonight the goal is to get the information and to find out from you know from Miss Gray or as association time frame in terms of your review comments to come back to us. Then obviously we're gonna hear those. We're getting this information tonight. You know, I think we want to reiterate. This is the first time we've seen it. We've not had this tucked away. So we're seeing it. Obviously, we've got questions tonight. Then it's got to come back to the board, and then I think the rest of those issues kind of roll out from when it's brought back, and then a vote has to be taken here to trigger the next phase in terms of where we're going. So, you know, I think our goal was we would kind of talked about two dates roughly. I think, what, the 6th and then maybe the 20th. And I think, Ms. Gray, you said you all got people out of town and so forth, and I don't think it's fair to ask the clock to start ticking on you all till you have everything in hand. So are you saying at the time you vote on the plan, you will make the decision about whether you go before planning and zoning? I mean, I think that's, I don't see that we can really have that discussion before we're ready to have a plan. Okay. I mean, I don't think we can have that discussion on planning and zoning till, as, as Mr. Billing said, till we have something to talk about. I mean, because right now. Right, but it'll be announced that night. Yes. Yes, sir. Let, let me ask you a question on that. Did the city not um, send you all the notice of what they expected from which one of which was to take this project through planning and some? That's correct. 
It was, as I remember, it was in that correspondence, wasn't it? Yes. I, I'm not sure you have two city commissioners here. You probably could ask them. I'm, I'm not sure how you're going to get around that unless you sue the city. <coughs> the purpose of tonight, Ms. Water, in all fairness, the purpose of tonight is not to talk about litigation or work. The purpose of tonight is to get you the information, to get your comments back. And I, I think the rest thing, yeah. But part of the information that we need is if you are going to planning and zoning. I don't. I, I can I can repeat that again, but what I can tell you is, what we w want to hear from you in the next several weeks is based on this information. What is what is your all's feelings, and then we have to take that from there. And I don't think it's a, I don't think it's really appropriate or necessary to go any further than that tonight. Well, I, I think that the city should look for reducing I don't know what the secret is. There's not a We're trying to get. From this point to the point of even having something for the board to, to vote on. So I mean, yes, it's not meant to be suspicious. It's just meant to be. We're trying to get through this a piece at a time, and that's where we're at tonight. Well, the, most difficult thing for our group is the fact that we sent you all in January exactly what the neighborhood association would agree to and would not fight you on the reservoir mm -hmm. if you would put in two and and as i found out since i now am in possession of 1966 drawings of where our water lines in uh, are it looks like you built the head end over one um but anyway it it uh, appears that you have more capacity up there than you know but um anyway i'm not sure could you just elaborate what do you mean more capacity i mean that on those drawings it gives the tank capacity which is in excess of nine million gallons of the two tanks mm -hmm. and That's true. it shows where all the water lines are that they knew about in 1966 anyway um, you all, I don't know if you all had those drawings or not, but you can get them from the planning department. Yeah, it's, and they're it, very informative. It's my understanding that's, that tank is only a four and a half million gallon tank. Is that right? Combined, both tanks together. Both tanks together, but the tank we're putting in is a four and a half million gallon tank, correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. What, I. What my question is, how much will this tank hold? The new tank seven. Thank you. But anyway, there's given, no, you all didn't bother to even check to see what it would cost to put in the two tanks right now, which would keep the neighborhood from being a constant construction zone. And I know that you don't foresee Nobody at this point in time sees Frankfurt growing. And, uh, you know, we're figured that in the next 25 years about 2% uh, growth rate or less. And, but I do know that last year a distillery looked at coming to Frankfurt. And that would make a huge difference. And our neighborhood has been torn up for a long time. So it's important to us uh, if you put in the two, four and a half, or plus, say, let's say, a, a total of nine plus million gallons, then would that take care of if the distillery came in? I'm not sure I understand your question. My question is, if you replace the two tanks that are there with four and a half or 4.7 million gallon tanks, you put two in at the same time, would that capacity 
suffice if a distillery can. It kind of goes back, I think, to the question I'd ask you, Dave, look at is We go from nine to seven, and if we land X distillery, who uses basically something consistent with what our current distilleries are using, are we out of capacity? And that's, I think, what we ask you to look at based on current usage. How much of that capacity we have with a seven million, that quote, 70% extra capacity, how much of that would be eaten up? Is that? No, I'm asking if you put the two times. But bottom line is you're going from nine or some function of nine to seven. seven. And when we lose that two million capacity, if we get something big, are we out of capacity? In that, and, and, and how fast no. could that happen? Yeah. Which I think we'll get to with your other questions. Well, I, I know that part, but Right, but I think her question was if we land a distillery, would we would be out of plus be enough? Be enough to yeah, or would seven plus be enough? No, I'm not interested in that. That's what you all have been answering. Yeah. I'm interested in answering the question we asked in January, to which we have not had an answer, which is if you put in two, four and a half, or 4.7 mm -hmm. million oh, gallon tanks back mm -hmm. in, would that take care of the needs of Frankfort, Kentucky, even with a new large water capacity or user customer? I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you. We answered the question on how much two, 4.6 million gallon I understand that. And that they was exactly the same thing as two seven million gallon tanks, right. which makes no sense whatsoever. That's because they're lower. The the taller you get, the more efficient the cross section is. The, the two four point six million gallon tanks to replace exactly what we have up there now is going to cost eight point one five million. That's an engineering estimate, which is more than double what we're talking about this. Now, where this really saves the city money the is city. the ratepayers, city, oh, and county. And seven other counties that we're selling water. Everybody, everybody that buys water from us is when we do need additional storage. If we put two 4.6s up there, if we replace that, we got to go somewhere <laughs> else for storage. If that's elevated storage, that can cost ten times on a gallon basis well, to see, go somewhere that's else. That's been my point all along that no one has looked in 1980, I mean 1897 or whenever it was, the reservoir was where the capital annex is, a large open pool. Um, it, it, when it was moved up to Tanglewood, there was nothing between the hill that the reservoir is now on and downtown. It took you a third of a day to get up to Tanglewood. And uh, a third of the day, there were two farms. There was no capital. There was nothing there. It was out in the country. My question has always been, why did you not invite some experts in here to tell you where the most efficient place in the long run would be to put the reservoir? You all decided to give us two you know, a state option and a city option, which you knew weren't going to fly. Uh, and the third option was a place that would work for you. It is on the east-west connector. It flows downhill to the water treatment plant. Now, you say that would cost you, the one figure I heard was 5.8 million more than putting this tank in tank. But we have had no expert people. Strand has come over here and said what you figured out was right. But you haven't had any outside expertise come in. I mean, we are looking at now the reservoir is in the middle of town, and which is not the safest place for it to be. They're generally put on agricultural land or industrial land. Now, you all have change that land into an industrial park. But it is not ideal. Um, you know, it, it's, but I don't think you have ever considered where it might be the best place for the next 50 years, the next 100 years. 
if you put two by uh, seven million gallon tanks in Frankfurt, what would happen to Berlin? God knows that we would all love that. But at this point in time, that's not foreseen. But the surrounding areas around us that you sell water to are going to grow. Woodford County, Anderson County, Shelby County. Those are places that are experienced in growth. And it does not make sense for the residents of Franklin and Tanglewood to pay the plant board's bills. And that's what we've done so far. You've saved four and a half million dollars by making that stupid vote to put the head in up in Tanglewood, exactly what the consultant told you not to do. And it has cost the residents of Tanglewood four and a half million dollars in property loss of property values. Putting the reservoir there is going to do nothing but make that more expensive to us. And we didn't sign up to pay your bills. You know, I mean, it's not fair to ask one neighborhood to pay the bills for an $86 million a year business. And I, I don't know why you all don't get that. You can't even look at the map and see all the houses up there that are around this reservoir you want to build. It's like you've got blinders on. <laughs> Trying to put a nine-size foot into a four-size shoe. Do you understand, Mr. Cubine, anything I said? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand why we don't want to save money at our expense? I mean, yes, it's good for the rate payers, <clears throat> and we all are those rate payers. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is you've asked too much of our neighborhood. You have absolutely destroyed our neighborhood. And at some point in time, you all need to think about what you can do to make it right. And doing this is going to help. It's going to take more value away from our houses. So there was an article in the paper yesterday. The city schools want to increase the teacher pay. Well, where do you think that money comes from? Since you all don't pay any taxes. I do. I know we do individually, but I'm saying the plant, plant board does. I know, I know. They can leave the lights on out here all night long every night. <laughs> it looks lovely at night. And you can tell they don't have to pay the electric bill. So, you know, my husband makes me turn out our lights. Unfortunately, I would like to leave mine on too. Well, I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to ask any questions they have. Um, if anybody has any others about the rendering, um, let's get those out. If not, did you guys have anything else to present as part of the renderings? And you all did say that we would get hard copies of some of these views. Is that correct? They'll actually be, I'll let you answer, but I believe they'll all be online and we'll notify. Yeah. It is a, P, those, what we looked at are PDFs. So you need regular Acrobat, I believe it is. We're gonna make them available on the website, all six of them. You can download them and trust them and look at them on a computer. And then the other part you'd ask about when we, when we get the information from GRW on the utilities, I mean, obviously those are gonna be pretty large maps. And I think Harvey, you said we're gonna, you've made arrangements to print those and, and deliver hard, hard copies up to you to distribute however you want. Sir. Um, just one quick question, if I may. Um, one of the, if you could go back to those reservoir uh, renderings. Please. The one I just closed, on the, the 3D? Uh, yes, sir, the 3D, please. The, okay, right where your mouse is right now, that wall, um, it's showing there that that is terraced. Is it currently terraced or is it, mm -hmm. it is? It, it is. Currently is. 
That's all. Thank you. Yep. Well, thanks. I think the other ask we had was for the projections on water usage going forward, and I assume we'll have those shortly as well. We'll try to do our best. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Well, if there's no more questions on item one, we'll move on to item two, which is to discuss and present the Head and Reservoir Property Site Survey Drawings, Fence Options, and Cost Implications of Different Fence Options. All righty. Uh, I think everybody here knows me. Uh, Aaron Nickerson with GRW. Glad to see everybody again. Uh, more, a more serious note. Uh, what I'd like to do tonight is, is go over some fencing options. Uh, we went over some a long time ago, but wh what we'd like to go over today is basically the revised options going from the the seven foot montage with the brick base that you guys uh, had originally uh, uh, advised that you would like to see and then show some additional options that we've put together to either show different aesthetic configurations uh, with another fencing product and then also show fence on grade versus fences with individual piers or columns every eight sixteen feet 24 foot depending on what was what's necessary for the landscape is that legible to everybody over there okay I didn't think so hmm. um, we go. we'll go with this guy then this will work out better okay so we got up here we have seven different options that you see I have another one as well uh, to show uh, but what each one of these options is, is the fence style. Then we show the fence construction estimated cost, the cost for the demolition of the parking structure, the estimated cost for the landscaping based off of the uh, inside out design that was, that was put together uh, a while back, the fence uh, parking design fee for, for all the work, landscape design fee, estimated relocation of utilities for the first one, and that was just a, a ballpark number based on the initial discussions. That's going to be revised based on the final uh, found conditions. Uh, and then the total cost. And the order that you see up here is based on height of fence. So all the seven foot fences are shown here first and then into the 10 foot fences. Sorry, Aaron. Yeah. I just have to interrupt just one minute, if I could, because I wanted to set up, I, I don't even think everybody in the neighborhood um, knows exactly why we are going through this right now. So if I could just give a little bit of background to catch people up. Um, so uh, June 29th was the date, June 29th of 2016 was the date that the neighborhood originally sent the Frankfurt Plant Board our choice of fencing. It was that wavy top with the brick base. And so that was about a year ago. Um, it was in November 22nd of last 
of 2016 that we said, okay, we understand that we, unbeknownst to us, we had picked a custom fence, which was expensive and in the interest of reducing costs, we said, okay, we'll go with our second choice of fence. Um, in January and February, we fine-tuned the type, the color of brick that we wanted. Um, but on March 16th, some members from the TNAI and the Frankfurt Plant Board had a meeting. And at that time, the Frankfurt Plant Board uh, told us that there were some issues with the brick base, the footer for the brick base would have to be large and that that might cause some issues for utilities. And therefore, the Frankfurt Plant Board recommends against having a brick base. At that March 16th meeting, there was a map on the table that um, Adam and some people were pointing to kind of showing us some issues of concern. Um, one issue was the, the gas regulator, which we discussed at that time a way to work around that, but there seems to remain some issues with other utilities that would interfere with the brick base. Um, on March 16th, we asked the plant board at that time for a map of the utilities because we said, can you show us on the map where these problems are? Is this like, you know, pretty much across the property? Is this just in certain areas that it would cause problems? And uh, we are still waiting for that map. So what the plant board would like to show us is they have made these some selections of uh, fencing options that do not involve a brick base um, that they would like to show us. And I have told them that until we see the map that shows us exactly what the issues are and where they are, that we can't properly assess whether we need to change our um, opinions about the brick base or not. So for the neighborhood, this is just something that they're showing us. We're happy to look at it but we can't make a decision until we have all of the information and that includes a map that shows the where the issue areas are for the utilities. Sure. So I just wanna make sure that everybody, that we're all on the same page and that that's um, where, why we're having this presentation right now. Sorry to interrupt. No Suzanne, I think that was a, a a good briefing. Uh, what this spreadsheet shows is the the first fence option on top is what the the neighborhood chose uh, near the end of January, and once that fence was selected, GRW began uh, the design of that fence, and they got the draft set of plans and specifications ready to go out for bid for that fence that you all chose. And when the, um, the design of the footing came out in these drawings, it was four and a half feet wide at the bottom. And we knew we had just put those utilities in the ground and we knew they were right up against the property line and we knew we had a problem. So around March 16th, we met with a couple of you folks from TNA and we said, hey, we think we've got a problem. You know, we didn't realize until the drawings came out that the footing was going to be four and a half feet wide at the bottom. We met with y'all and said, hey, we've, we've got an issue here. Uh, we did have some drawings at that meeting. Uh, they didn't have any utilities on them. Uh, it was just drawings showing the outline of the property line. But what we did have at that meeting was photographs showing the existing utilities and we knew we had a problem. We've got photographs with paint on the ground showing the distance from the fence of the existing utilities and we knew we had a problem. So after we met, we met with you on March 16th, you know, we had some board members that said, hey, you know, we know the foundation wall is gonna cause us problem. Let's start looking at other options. What about perhaps, you know, building a fence on grade but have columns spaced and that's what uh, the remainder of these fence options are is constructing a fence on grade without the uh, foundation wall but having uh, masonry columns. So that's why we're coming back to you now with these other cost estimates is because we knew in March we had conflicts with the existing utilities that are in the ground. And since the March meeting you had asked you know for proof that you know, our utilities are, are in conflict. 
And that's what Aaron was talking about earlier tonight. The surveying crews just finished up last week getting all the, the data, and they're trying to put it into a plan sheet as we speak. It's my understanding we'll have that plan sheet tomorrow or the next day. That's what we've been working on. You asked for proof that the utilities are in the way, and we've gotten GRW up there with their survey crew to you know, accurately locate the utilities on a drawing. And I might add one other thing I think that happened after we had that meeting, we went through kind of two interim steps is I think we carefully tried to consider could we move the fence on brick base and basically we'd have to go into current residence property which we didn't think and we informally understood that that wasn't extremely popular then we also looked at could we in fact give the residents an extra two or four feet could we actually pull the feet back but we'd have to maintain an easement because the utilities would now be in the residence property and nothing could be planned on them because that cable and everything this area that we don't want to cut would now be on your side to maintain the property and for a lot of reasons that didn't seem to be feasible especially since we didn't know how far we can pull back in terms of actually giving that amount of property so there was an interim step in there where we tried to evaluate kind of moving that fence line to either to miss those utilities and that seemed to have a lot of issues that kind of stem from that and like you said, Herbie, that kind of brought us to this point right here. I guess my question is, did you all ever think about just making a smaller foundation? Not the four foot wide? I mean, because oh, you've believe got me. one now. Yeah. Believe me, we, yeah. And, and I don't know how that, I don't know if you're going to explain to me how you're going to take the foundation <coughs> out and fit to me where I'm like two feet higher mm -hmm. than what you got over there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to put a fence and then I have flowers and you have weeds. That ain't going to mix. So I'm just... I don't, I don't understand yeah. how you're going to do that anyway. Well, if I could I just, just keep my little foundation back there. Let's, let, let's let Aaron get through his presentation, and then we'll, okay. yeah, if we get all the data out. I just thought yeah. about just a smaller foundation than going to no foundation yeah. at all. Was that discussed? Yeah, we, we, we discussed that. Okay, okay. He's going to tell me. Well, let me yeah. give a good, <laughs> let me give a 15-second architectural perspective on all that. I'll get the easy part. Uh, the fencing at that meeting that we had uh, to present the, the construction documents, one of the other things that we brought forward that we wanted everybody to be absolutely clear on was right now you got a grade that does this. You know, it's not level. It's not at one angle. If you put a fence on that, you're going to have to step that fence unless you want to go with a sloped single fencing on grade and then you can follow the follow the grade so we presented images of that as well just to make sure everybody was clear on what would what would be going in there if we did the masonry wall with eight foot fencing seven foot fencing whatever that was second thing about the footings the footings are sized based on the wind load on the wall and the wind load that the fence acts onto that wall so the size that we have is as small as you're going to get without replacing the fence in 15 years There's or no replacing the wall. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you take care well, of all we well, <laughs> and after the reservoir, we'll be the complete. <laughs> so that's that's the short answer to that. It's it's designed based off the loads that would be acted on it, and if some people wanted privacy slats in there, that's going to make the load even heavier on that wall, and you don't want the plan board coming in there in 10 or 15 years and tearing the wall out and putting a new one in I assume so we want to do it once and want to do it once right so it, we'd like to make it smaller we talked about it we tried to make it smaller what different options are but you got depth to rock in those areas as well you get too deep with the foundation <coughs> which is an option to make it smaller you're getting into rock and then there's going to be a hoe ram there digging out a four foot hole every 16 feet in front of everybody's property so that's so like the foundation that we currently have there there's no kind of fencing option to go on to that type that size of a foundation no that's that's just a, a maintenance curve basically is what that is it's it's 16 or 24 inches deep by six inches wide or eight inches wide but it's just there basically to at the time that it was put in which I got no idea but I assume it was probably 40 or 50 years ago it was there to separate the property, basically, maintenance reasons. Is the underground utility issue 
primarily right there where the head end is on A Avenue, or does it go all the way around? It goes all the way around, and it depends on where you are. It's significantly worse. There's probably areas that are worse than the head end. Um, value is that a reasonable assumption so there may be a 50 foot stretch where it's not an issue and then there may be a 25 foot stretch where it's a complete issue but there are points all the way around yeah yep okay well as walt said i'll i'll be glad to answer any questions um let me get through kind of the list here to show you guys the different things we've come up with as far as options and then we can get into a little bit more uh, discussion if there is on specifics uh, so we got seven options up here. The first option that's shown, as Herbie said, is the cost associated with the seven foot montage wall with the 40 inch brick base. That was the initial selection that was requested. With all those fees in total, that, that cost was $936,000 estimated. The, the second uh, option that you're seeing up there is a seven foot montage two on on grade with masonry piers. What that is is uh, fencing, which is what you see over there. There's the montage and the ages. I don't think anyone called that out, but as you came in, there was the fencing options over there of the two that we were looking at. Uh, but what that would be is a seven uh, seven foot fence, and then every 16 feet there'd be a masonry pier. And I got images to show, but I just want to go through the numbers real quick and let you see. Uh, cost on that total was $737,000 and $852. The third option was a seven foot Aegis fence on grade. So that has no masonry piers at all. It's just a fence on grade, so it would follow the slope. Um, that one also has ornamental rings in it to dress it up and make it a little bit more residential scale. Uh, the cost on that was $592,000. So you can see a significant drop if, when you're getting rid of the masonry piers. Not to say it's bad or good, but it's showing you the difference. Seven foot Aegis on grade with masonry piers and rings. Uh, that gets, that's $774,000. Then the next option we looked at because some of the residents said they'd like a taller wall, maybe a 10 foot wall. The, the tallest walls you're getting with these fences is usually 10 to 12 foot. So we got a 10 foot wall in here that's on grade with rings. That's $653,000. 10 foot wall uh, with rings with masonry piers. 10 foot masonry piers is 954000 So that's pretty close to the same cost as the original uh, product that you're looking at. And then the last option is a 10 foot um, Aegis fence with seven foot piers between the the ten foot wall, and there's an image of that as well. But that's eight hundred twenty eight thousand dollars. I told you originally there's eight up here. There's seven that you see. The eighth one is one I I didn't put on here because it was never asked for, but I wanted you to see it as a reference. And it's a seven foot montage, which is that fence over there, on grade, and that is five hundred fifty one thousand. And that's your cheapest What's the option. So what you're seeing on the I'll be on number eight, the one you talked about. Two hundred eighteen thousand. What's that? Two hundred eighteen thousand four thirty-eight. Okay. And those are estimates based off of uh, budgetary information that's been provided by the manufacturers. No, it's, it's straight from the manufacturer. Uh, so the last one casting stickers for this option, which was the one they. The price was um, only six hundred and some thousand. Mm. Now has it gone up? This is adding all the total costs for everything. That was too. Mm -hmm. I don't. And when when we chose a different top to replace the one that was more expensive, it saved you two hundred thousand dollars, and. I mean, this you're talking about the fence and you're going from the metro fence which was a, a metco product and that was the custom ornamental fence that suzanne was talking about that's what i said we went from that saved two hundred thousand dollars 
to go to what was our second choice, which is what they have at, similar to what they have at Bowman Beach. That's correct. Which we all went and looked at. Like uh, the school children. But the figures, every time we get the figures, they have gone up so dramatically that it, it's just unbelievable. Miss Waterfield, <clears throat> the last uh, presentation we gave had a PowerPoint that listed all the various fencing options and estimated construction costs. That was in November. Now, since November, we have spent considerable amount of time designing the footing, and the November cost estimate was based on a two-foot footing. And now that the structural engineers have designed the footing, it went to four and a half feet wide. So there's one uh, place for the increase in cost. Well, if you're not going to put in the brick base, how did that increase the cost? Well, that first one you're seeing up there is what you guys asked for. So that's the montage two at the but foundation. What I'm saying is that that you all knew at the that time. that first line up there. This is the first time that we've given an official estimate on the uh, on the actual seven that, foot with that the brick. That first line, when we voted in November, December, we voted for a budget of 860000 which equates to the 936 minus the relocation of utilities at 72000 which we didn't have at the time. So the 930 that's up there is It also the, did not have the landscaping fee, right. and it didn't have the fee to design But overall, uh, I'm just going to what we budget, budgetarily, we looked at a figure of 860. Yep. That was all in for everything. Tearing off the parking garage, okay. landscaping, that was an all in 860. And that was based off all the Emetco products right. and the initial stuff. These are all the different products. And if you products. take 930 minus 72, that takes you right back to basically 860. So everything up there is pretty much apples to apples in terms of where we were in November at 860, added on to relocate the utilities. And then everything else basically falls from that number as for comparison purposes. That's correct. But, but were you just saying, Aaron, that new since November is the landscaping design fee and the fence parking design fee? No. The, did I hear that wrong? The landscaping fee is new since it was transferred over to asking for GRW to do the design of the landscape. The, and there is another, if you're going to do a brick wall, it's like what we talked about in the meeting that we had, uh, when we looked at the design documents is along Tanglewood Drive if you put a masonry wall along there there's water retention issues we would have to put stormwater inlets on either side of that wall to collect the rainwater and get it across the street without flooding the street that's over there or damming it behind the masonry so we have to we have to design that system as well and work with the city to to redo the stormwater piping so, so the fence parking design fee that was in December? If we're to go up with the, the number one up there, if, if it was decided to go with a brick wall, I mean that with, with any of these, no, the 35,000 has always been the same. The first line that you're seeing up here, the 44,000, if you were to go with this option, we would have to redesign that stormwater. So there's additional fee in there for us to design that stormwater okay. system. Okay, I got, you. I got you. But when we adopted, Susan, the budget of 860, everything would have been in that number that we addressed budgetarily, maybe not from what you were looking at engineering, but from a budget standpoint, we were looking at that top line and what is new since then is the 8,000 landscape design fee, which I think is important to be on the record there is Tanglewood has a strong interest in making sure that Inside Out had the opportunity to bid. It's a competitive bid. And I think we took the position that from a procurement standpoint, there was no way to let someone design the document they were going to bid on. So this, by going with transferring to GRW, which is the only reason to transfer it to GRW, was to clear the way that if Inside Out wanted to bid and had a competitive bid and the best bid, they'd be eligible to win it. If we let them design it all, they basically are disqualifying themselves from bidding on their own job. And then the other new one was the utilities, the 72000 and that's assuming that we could wall, we could go around that Columbia high pressure valve and somehow cut around it and not pay Columbia gas up to $200,000 to move that structure. And we're a utility and Columbia gas is a utility. They're not going to do that for us free. Their base said, you want it moved? It's $200,000. So. 
Okay. So what I'd like to do is just go go through. Um, I know some of you, or most of you, are familiar with, you know, the format that I've given a lot of these estimates in. Sorry, let me figure out how this guy's working. So each one of these estimates that you saw on the previous sheet, we put down a cost to give you an idea of total total linear foot cost, total cost of that scope. This is just for the fencing. The cost of the fence itself, what the style was. Just showing you here that if you wanted to do privacy slats, the cost on those is roughly $20 uh, a linear foot. Uh, before you get too far in, what's the current height of the fence that's there now? To, to include the to include the angle that goes in, just just so we can you know just so mm -hmm. we can. Our right now, I think it's a six foot fence, and it's probably going up another foot after the taper, okay. where you got the three rows so of the barbed wire. Seven foot on the foundation. Just so we can kind of get a yeah. mind's eye picture of. Yep, and so that what's there is there, and then we're looking at seven foot on grade options, seven foot fence on top of a forty inch. So that's almost, uh, you know, it's almost going to be eleven inches by the time you're done with it, depending on where it's at. Um, and then you just got ten foot on grade fences. And so uh, okay, so you got the the style of fence there. And then you got the costs for the masonry wall below. So these are the components that are going into the 40-inch uh, high masonry wall. And then there's the demolition cost and the associated general conditions cost that a contractor would be charging based on that scope. And obviously, these are all estimates, but they're this value here of the actual fencing is coming straight from the supplier. Um, Sorry, this mouth is, mouse is uh, moving on its own here. Uh, and then these walls here are based off past construction jobs that we've done uh, in the recent future to give you rough, rough estimates of what they're going for. But important for everybody to know, and most people in here do know, depending on when you bid this out, what the construction climate is, what the time of year is. These costs can go down, they can go up, they can be all over the place. But these are our estimated cost. So this is the first one. This was the Montage 2 um, that you guys had selected with the brick base, the Montage 7-foot fence on top. The cost for the fencing itself was 521,600, just below 600. Um, sorry. The uh, second fencing that was on that list was a Montage two, that seven foot fence um, with seven foot masonry piers. Again, the values are all outlined, um, how we came up with them. And then we gave some images on roughly what, you know, that, that could look like. Obviously, the pier design isn't exactly what we're proposing, but we're looking for pictures of similar products from manufacturers and what they've installed. So you can see here as it's going up a hill. Um, it, it steps a little bit. This one, they're actually sloping the fence between each pier. This one here is just um, same height piers with with the fence going between it. But that's the um, that right there is the product that you're looking at over there on the on the countertop, the montage too. Can I ask a question? Yeah. About the the height of the piers, and you know, look, looking at construction documents is not my so help me out with that if you would, please. But it looks to me like that you're proposing like maybe a seven foot column. Is that is that about right, the brick? Let me get this thing under control. Um, well, that doesn't help. <coughs> Sorry, thought I was helping the cause. Uh, Okay, so th this was just images to show you from the manufacturer's website to say this is what we've done in the past. It's similar to what you're saying. So what, what we've come, come back and looked at is, well, for this individual design, 
a seven foot masonry wall, which with the cap actually makes it seven foot six high. Uh, but this is a cross section of it to show you how we propose to construct it. It shows our four foot by four foot foundation for that pier. And then we gave an elevation that shows that's what that fencing system would roughly look like. Okay. So we got a cast stone base, masonry here, which is the color of the masonry you guys liked, some banding, just some accent bands, and then a cast stone cap on top. And then the fence ties into it on either side. And what kind of footer do you need to support? That, need, support that, that needs a four foot by four foot footing with um, the thickness is 12 inches for that design. So how are you, you going to avoid the base for the pillar uh, getting in the way of the utilities? How, how does that happen? That's well, that's the, that's the purpose again. The utility survey is what we're able to do. We see exactly where everything is. Then we can lay the fence out based on its proximity to the property line, see where those, those interactions are. If it's hitting at point A, we can offset the spacing of those columns so it's at, well, let's say B. I'm hitting at A and C instead. So we offset where those columns are. So then all that's going past that utility at that point would be your fencing. So the idea is that you'd be able to, where the, you know, where the uh, footprint is for that foundation, you'd be able to get those outside of the utility. Now there may be areas where there's the utility is running too close and parallel with a property line that you just wouldn't be able to fit it at all. If that's the case, which is why we're looking at it, you could extend that foundation, make it thicker and make it longer, but the down, downside to that is when you get thicker, we're getting close to the rock that's already there. And you guys know from living up there, there's, there's not much soil before you get to rock in some areas. It's if you hit rock, graceful. if you hit rock, we have to excavate down to the depth. Um, so you'd have to hoe ram that area to take it out. So the thicker we make that foundation, the worse off we make the construction and the. So you can't get around it. It it depends. It, I mean, we can. Well, it really does depend. You, I mean, you can't tell it. That's the whole purpose of doing the survey. If we find out that we got. We have three and a half foot in this one area, and we just can't make anything happen other than keeping this column there that we need to have it. At that one location, we can have a different footing. So, so the pillars won't necessarily be located equally apart from one another. Well, the idea would, to make, would be to make them equal to start with, see where it hits, and if they are hitting, we could move them all equally away and see if we're hitting anything then, or we could move them all this way and you know if we get to a point where there's two or three in a row that you just can't avoid then it comes up an issue of well is there no columns at those locations does the fence go back farther on the property something will have to be agreed to on what what can happen there because you can't i mean there there has to be some the fence doesn't <laughs> rely on the columns for its strength correct yeah what what this allows us to do is this fence at the mid, if this is 16 foot long, so just as an example, I mean, you could go eight foot, then you'll have a, you could go 16 the way we're looking at it to optimize and, and keep enough columns for proportion and keep the aesthetic look without it being too far separated. Go six, every 16 foot to start with and put a column. What that allows us to do is you can do a standard uh, column foundation, which is a post hole digger that you put for that main post and then the other post tie on the side of the column. Um, I mean, I might add, I think the reason this option was pursued to present was we knew if we went with the brick base, I mean, it was 100% we were hitting utilities because we were digging. In theory, this option still gives the opportunity to have a, I guess, more upscale looking fence than just straight fencing, mm -hmm. but it does give us a lot of flexibility to move the columns to miss areas but like you said, you may have to give up a little uniformity or whatever, but mm -hmm. obviously the cheapest option would be just to put a fence. But with the columns, I think, and I think you can see it's not a matter of trying to save money on the column. I mean, it's, but it does, will make the fence look better. Well, I think, Ms. Waterfield, in fairness, if you can look at the thing to go with the 10-foot fence with the columns is a more expensive option than what we dealt with here last November. 
Well, so it's not a way to try to cut costs. Well, let me say this. Uh, we are still dealing with something that you don't know whether you can deliver or not. So you're asking us to take a new vote mm -hmm. on a fence that you have no clue whether or not you can deliver because we still don't know where the utilities are and how much that will be impacted. The point of the fence is to block the view of the hideous building that is there. This doesn't block any view behind my house. I mean, I've got better coverage right now unless Herbie decides to tear my vines down again. I, I've got better coverage right now. But if he moves this fence in and gives me two feet where I can only plant grass and no ground cover that would Covered this fence, then you, you haven't done anything to help me. Well, but I, I think you have to, in fairness, agree that if we put a better quality fence in than what we have now, the whole drive back into Tanglewood with the 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 plant board property on the left will be a much better looking fence than that than what's up there right now along that whole drive. Is that isn't that correct? Well, I mean, you may think that a seven foot fence with brick or a ten foot fence. No, there's also a 10 foot. There's other, there's, other there's other options. There's other. There's a 10 foot option also. And there's also the option to put the privacy screens in as yeah. well, right? I understand that, but you you are only getting with 10 feet. You're only blocking half, less than half the view of the building behind my house. 10 feet, and if it were solid masonry, that would be much better because then when my vines are gone and it's open to the world, and the people who work there can look straight in my windows. Uh, you know, it, it's, at least I would have a blockade, which would, you know, give me some privacy. But I mean, you know, people come outside to smoke or to have conversations at the plant board, and I hear them all. If I leave my back door open, you know, I hear every conversation that's going on over there. So this fence does not help me at all. Now, I went along with the choice with the brick base because at least I got three feet of coverage. And otherwise, I'm not a member of the Tanglewood Neighborhood Association, and I went along with what the neighborhood wanted. I wanted a solid fence because I didn't care if I got any breath of air through there. My wind comes from the west most of the time. So I'm not affected like people on Reservoir. But they're going to get their wind back if the 270 days ever comes up that the parking garage is gone and it's back. To, I, I, I sure to God we've gone through 270 and, uh, but I don't even know if it's been put out on bid yet. But all I'm saying is, yes, this is a nice looking fence for somebody who wants to see what's behind the fence. I don't want to see what's behind the fence. You know, I mean, it, it, it doesn't help hide the view. With the brick base, at least you had three feet of the view hidden. Now that doesn't get me up to the office windows, which have been, you know, had some treatment so I can't see in. They can, however, see out. And if the vines are torn down, which is the plant board's prerogative uh, at any point in time, um, you know, then I have nothing, no privacy. So, you know, the neighborhood can vote on what they want. But I can tell you right now, this this does not help me. This does not give me any value back that you stripped from my house. Um, it, it, it just it doesn't work. And I don't know why you can't see what I see when I look out in my backyard. Or when my husband looks out and sees cars parked every single day in your car. 
and I don't know where we are on the 270 days that it was 120 for Aaron to do the engineering to take out the parking garage that the engineer to put in, which seems totally excessive. It also seems excessive that we are just now finding out what you have known for evidently a long time, that you were not going to put in the fence that we picked up. Not going to. Now, I don't know whether that's your all's fault because you didn't get Aaron involved early enough to find out which could put in. But, I mean, if this is so frustrating that we cannot seem to make you understand what you've done to us and what you are not willing to fix. You are not willing to fix it. Now, this is a pretty fence, as I said, for somebody who lives in a neighborhood where you have something nice to look at behind you. But it's not nice to look at a building that looks like a damn prison. And that's what it looks like. It's an industrial site that you have put in my backyard. And I can't get away from it. And certainly a seven foot fence with brick palisters is my uh, father-in-law would call them, are, are not sufficient to hide any of it. It just puts a prettier frame on them. Let me, uh let me kind of keep going through these and I can show the different 10 foot option, the others, but I reiterate what I said in the, in the meeting we had a couple months ago with, with a couple of the TNA members and everything else. I mean, when we're, when we're looking at fences and you're designing a fence, you want it to be to the scale of the surroundings, obviously, right? You put something that's closer to property and make it taller, it encloses you and makes it, the proportions just aren't there. What we're doing to try to help that, by, by putting the fence around, we're upgrading the fence that's already there. We're upgrading the overall aesthetics, but in concert with what we're gonna do here, we have additional options of another fence, which I believe is over there, that has some more ornamentation in it. Looks a little bit nicer, but you have options where you could put privacy slats in here as well. So if there are neighbors along the property line that want no view of anything you can fill that in and make it a solid fence other people if they want to see it they can leave it open do the privacy slats have any acoustic properties or can you get different privacy slats that have some acoustic properties they make one type that i'm aware of for retrofitting aluminum and steel fences with with uh, pickets that are anywhere from three quarter to an inch and a half they make pvc snap-on slats so the pvc looks kind of like a wing and it's got a C shape in the middle, open it up, it goes around the slat and then there's another receiver that goes over it to hold it tight. And then when you get to these ends, they make another piece that, that goes between it and a column or a wall. As far as the acoustics on it, I would have to say from what they are, they haven't been tested because if that was the primary reason, I would say they would say to do something else. but. But anything that's a hard, dense surface like that is definitely going to reduce acoustics. So, but I'm not going to say it would be 20 decibel drop or uh, whatever, but it would definitely make a difference. Uh, but the third option to this that we looked at is also the landscaping plan. And yes, we proposed a landscaping plan back in October 15, something like that, to the city. What we were showing there and what that whole approach was was just to show an idea of what you could start to do <coughs> without tearing down the retaining wall and beautify the landscape a little bit. But what we're charged with doing now is we're taking the ideas of the initial inside out plan that you all worked with them on, combining it with the one we started to work on, pull that all together to add more deciduous trees, add more stuff that's more coverage like you're asking for, depending on the what area it is and what would be behind that, to go in concert with the fence and then landscaping behind that to kind of blend that in and, and, and make that work depending on, you know, the neighbor that's behind there or the needs. Let me ask you. Now, it's not going to be a solid wall. It's never going to be a solid wall. 
Um, you can put the privacy slats in there and, and get rid of your view if you want to. Um, but I'd say once that, once if the retaining wall was to come down and you put landscaping up there, the perspective you have from standing in a yard and then 30 feet away, 10 foot above you is a building that's 16 foot tall and then another 40 foot away from that is a building that's 16 foot tall, whatever that water tower is. You can only see so much in your perspective. And a, and a masonry wall below might look nice, but it's not going to block a view of anything. Um, so just putting that out there. But we talked about that in the meeting and tried to at least understand where I was coming from and trying to bring up other ideas that we well, can that I are reasonable. That. But an eight-foot flowering fruit tree. That's understandable. I mean, it's it, not going to work. It was just yeah. a beginning. It was just a beginning. It was just to show other ideas were to put grading on that and put vines well, and do other I mean, things. When we're talking behind my house, if you move the fence in four feet, there's only 30 feet between me and the building. And I think there's only 10 feet between my property and the road. Is that correct? As you recall. It depends on the area, but it's it's probably it's probably relatively close. It's probably 10, 15 feet. It's not 15, but anyway, how how wide is your road? Right there, it's no, it goes down to 16, I think. Right there, it goes okay, up to so 20. Um, <coughs> what I'm saying is, if these utility lines are there, um, you can't plant anything on your side. Not one thing. It depends because on what you're going to plant. Not, there's no room for the root system. If you're right on top of a utility, you're going to be in something with a smaller root system, so you're going to be a three to four foot shrub of some sort. How does that help? Depending on, depending on where it is. Building. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. Um, if we have these utility lines that are causing such problems, then we can't get the necessary screening from landscaping well, that you are trying to provide and that we want. I understand. We, all we can do is get the survey, see where that is, see if the fence is actually where the property lines are right now. That's the biggest, one of the biggest issues is to make sure that that fence is where the property line is because it could make it worse for one side or the other. Um, but we need to make sure we're building this new fence on wherever the property line is so we're not building it on your property. Well, but I thought Herbie wanted to move it at least two feet in up to four feet in. Well, we were talking about an example. I think what he was saying is we have a four-foot foundation. What we were doing was trying to get up to the property line, but the footing would be up to the property line, so the, pier, the actual pilaster, as you called it, would be... Uh, that depth back, so it would be one foot on either side of that that would be going up, so it would be a foot so back from the property line. Well, it depends on the system and which one we're looking at, but. I think moving the fence line was a discussion that came when they were trying to accommodate the base needed for the brick mm -hmm. wall. I think that was part of that discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know where that, I, I would assume that. No, well, no, from our we talked about that in the meeting, but the, we were proposed we were showing all the options to show worst case to best case, and the worst case was to be able to not move utilities as, as what we knew at the time without a survey, and accommodate the footing. That the only way to do that was going to be to get an easement on all your all property. Now what we had talked about, and we knew you didn't want to do that was showing you what we could do if we go and stay completely on the plan board property. So that's the now direction the that's property. the direction that we've been taking. So the city and the city would have to ask us for Can I ask a question about um, about the fencing the fencing that you're proposing? There are people that want to grow vines. Is that appropriate for the fencing that's proposed? And also, sort of a two-part question, is it appropriate for that type of fencing? Um, and then the second part is a question for the plant board. Uh, is there going to be an 
issue with the plant board coming along and doing uh, cutting people's lines off. Is there going to be some sort of no. No. issue with that? Well, the vines on the fence is going to come down to a manufacturer's warranty issue, and depending on the manufacturer who ends up getting the thing, they'll have different requirements on that. I would have to say from a pessimistic view that they would probably say that they're going to not give you the warranty if you have a bunch of vining vines on it. That may not be the case, but just How saying worst case. So. What's the traditional warranty, the usual warranty? I think the, these ones we're looking at here are 25-year finish. So with about so if if mine's uh, theory of if you plant it if the residents put vines, I assume the warranty then about the vines is not about the structural integrity of the fence; it's about the finish. It would be yeah. It it I'd have to look at this specific manufacturer, but I'd say the finish is really the extended warranty you're getting. Most of the the structure of the of the um, products isn't that long. It's usually like 10 year or seven year. So it's mainly the vine issue would be just on the appearance. It's going to be the deteriorating finish. the actual product, and that's what people are going to call and complain about when the paint starts peeling off their fence or or uh, start getting rusting if it was on a steel fence. But in terms of vine, would vines cause any structural problem as far as the? It's going to increase the wind load on it, but. Is this engineered to take that wind load? The way we got it right now, it's not going to be a problem, yeah. Even including the privacy slats? Yeah, we've designed it to accommodate a percentage of privacy slats on it. So. And then what about the plant board's policy? I don't, I don't know what makes, what's, makes the company come by and start doing uh, maintenance or whatever you might call it, but would the plant board be okay with people growing their vines and not having them cut off? Be okay with me if y'all want to grow vines as long as everybody <coughs> is on board that the manufacturer's warranty may not be as long. Again, the, it's a board decision, but operationally, if things were the ones that grow vines, we certainly wouldn't want to uh, upset the neighbor. Okay. Uh, so I'll get back into this, and we'll probably come across a couple others that you can see, but. Um, Could I have just a second? What, everything you've proposed, I don't want to cut you short, but I mean, anything you put up there is going to be better looking than whatever is up there now. Okay. Uh, but after our meeting in March, we went back to the Neighborhood Association, those of us that were at the meeting, and sold the Neighborhood Association on going around the Columbia Gas. <coughs> We did not sell the Neighborhood Association on giving up the brick base. We don't have anything to take to the Neighborhood Association this week because what you've said, and I understand, is those brick columns you don't really know yet what you can do with them or if you can put them in or not. So we have nothing to take right now uh, in terms of if you want the Neighborhood Association to say, yes, we buy up on this or that. And understand that the, the interests of the Neighborhood Association are not the same as Lee Waterford's right now. And some of those, maybe other adjoining neighbors. But we have nothing to take right now. We still don't. And, and, I, and we'll, we'll, have, we'll have we'll elect officers, but soon down, I'll say, we, we can't make a recommendation. We can say, you will do this with the brick columns only to come back three weeks from now to say we can't do the brick columns. Um, when you, when Aaron, when you turn over to Herbie tomorrow or Thursday or whatever, where the, util where the utilities are, property line, everything, will you be able to say with some degree of certainty at that point that columns, I mean the final spacing has to be worked out and so forth, will you be able to say with some certainty that the columns is a feasible option? I mean, I could tell you right now the columns is a feasible option with what we have. The issue is going to be where and how many instances that we might have a conflict that we would have to go 24 foot without a column or go 8 foot with columns and then go 16 or something to, but miss, that will pop up on to miss a utility that, that you wouldn't want to have to 
but you'll be able to make a general assessment of that when you see those utilities. Yeah, I mean, the hope would be to get you the drawing as fast as possible, so I wouldn't take the time to integrate the two, but i get you the drawing, and then we'd be looking at it at the same time. But the big picture there was to show you, here's property line. Well, here's property line. Either here or here or here is where the fence at truly is. And then here's a utility here, here, here. And you can get a pretty good picture of just showing a, a two-foot line off that property line of what's going to hit that. Now, that's that would be pretty easy to do. Now, the implications of what the exact utility is and how you know how much of an issue that is is a different story but we'll be able to know right away if it's what we're going to be hitting well i guess because I, mean, I, I think i think uh, roger brought up a good point in that in order for this board to make a decision and give tangle with time for input i guess the question i don't want to but to use kind of an analogy we can't start the clock running until they have everything they need to look at and then i think it's then they ask them when can you get back to us Mm -hmm. But that clock really can't start until they've got everything. In a is that fair? I mean, I mean, we. When do you think? I mean, we've got to be in a position to say you've got everything we've got, and answer some of these questions that we came up with tonight. And then the question is, once we can turn that over, so you get your utility drawing done tomorrow, Thursday. The next assessment is where the pillars can go. How much longer does that take? I'm not saying to plot every one, but to say we think we can do it. On you know yeah, I mean, twenty four centers, sixteen centers, thirty. I mean thirty. I mean, basically, this is kind of what we'd be looking at. Yeah, I mean, to miss big picture stuff and get an idea of you know where we can go with the fence, it's it shouldn't take that long. It's define, it's just an issue define, of getting I think getting the is, utilities in and making yeah. sure that we have captured everything yeah. correctly on the utilities and before we get ahead of ourselves. I think for their purposes tonight, I think you're going to have to define that long that long two days two weeks one week 36 hours i mean what's well, i think it depends on what what exactly you're looking for i mean are you looking for a construction level site plan that shows all the columns and interactions with the utilities or are you just wanting a line on there and me highlighting sections where i say this you know, this is a worst case scenario. Plant board, you need to look at the utility that's there and say how much this is affecting you, whether you can move it without much issue, or if it's one of the big picture, this is going to cost 25 grand to move this one wire here. Um, but I could get, I mean, just as an individual drawing to get that's coordinated with, with column locations. Um, I mean, I, not to tell you wrong, but I think by next week we could have that. Well, would 90% of those columns be in the correct spot, or are we still playing with the bias? Still guessing, of, you know, how many lines? I mean, I have it know. tentatively drawn right now on the existing site plan, but we're, we have to modify the existing site plan based on the true utility survey that's being done. Survey. So when I import that in, I can see where I'm at then, but I'm going to have to move that to line up with the final property line which I know the property line isn't exactly that fence. It's some this way. It's some this way. My question is going to be how deep are the current stanchions for the current fence? You know, if You're talking about each one of the posts? Yeah. They're pro I mean, typically they're going to be 30, 36 inches from any manufacturer, so and they're probably going to have a 6 or 8 inch uh, column at each one of the locations for uh, just a no change to push everything out to July. there are utilities going through the fence already or below in certain areas not necessarily where a post is unless you got there was some a water line that was dug that's really deep you know I mean, when I it's constructed you could use the current you couldn't use the current fencing no basically what it comes down to is the, the big problem came up when we moved the fence totally on FPB. If you went exactly back to where it is today, but you're going to disrupt two feet into the neighbor's yard at least. So I to roll all that back, I see. I see. that's where you're getting into the utilities. I mean, two foot plus. I mean, two foot would yeah. be optimistic. Oh, cause yeah. <laughs> right. And I just want to make one clarification about the maps that we'd like to see. Um, the maps showing where the pillars would be 
absolutely that's important. Um, I feel like the plant board still needs to make the case to the neighborhood why the three foot brick base is not possible. And if that's a separate map, then maybe that needs to be a separate map. However, you all need to do it. But um, as far as the neighborhood is, association is concerned, all we've heard is there's gonna be a conflict. We haven't seen the maps and we would like to see the maps. I, I think there's some people that are still very interested in the three foot big brick base. Um, and so that's just a discussion that we're going to need to have amongst ourselves about that. But I, but I would just want to make sure that we're not just going to get one map that assumes that we're going with pillars because we haven't reached that point as a neighborhood yet. So then wrap all that up, Aaron. Do you think by you know June 9th you could have us or have the whole group um, the map with the feasibility of the only pillar fence and also a map of the feasibility of the walled fence is that next thursday or that's next friday friday, friday. Um, yeah i think that's reasonable okay um i think i mean if you if you remember suzanne when we we had the meeting we had that one site plan that showed and then i had just a, a line that was offset on it and that was kind of showing where it was going around the, around the site and that's the one that uh, you know we had the pictures relating to that of where the utilities were um, basically what I'd be doing is taking that site plan we'd have our survey on one and we'd have a site plan that integrated the actual final location of all the the columns or a four foot six line of what the foundation would be and what that would be hitting so you could see the difference between the two the, it's important to remember though too when we had that meeting one of the other reasons why we were swaying away from the masonry wall was that when you step up the hillside and you remember seeing the profile plans that I had that basically went like that if if you go, go much more than eight foot one side of that wall will be 40 inches the other side of that wall will be 60 inches if you go 16 foot that one side of that wall is going to be 40 inches but the other side of that wall is going to be seven or eight foot high right what that <laughs> well <laughs> slow down <laughs> slow down on the excitement um, the what happens when that gets larger and you get taller you're adding more and more load, more and more wind load to that. That means that four and a half footing is going to six, six and a half, seven foot, depending on what it is. So that means the only way it's happening is if it goes between the two properties or into the neighbor's properties or somewhere else, because there's no room for a foundation that big to go. So that was part of the reasoning why I think the plant board was wanting to look at other options that were aesthetically pleasing in combination with the, the landscaping uh, just showing you different costs showing you different options instead of sticking with that because I think there's probably going to be a good majority of dissension on wanting a seven foot masonry wall in their backyard um, so anyways that was part of the reason why we did that well, not to say it's the final solution it's good bad whatever they're just options for you to see <coughs> Well, 
but disguise that anyways. Yeah, and what after that meeting, <coughs> during that meeting and, and after that meeting with all the ones we've done since, when we've gone just fence on grade to avoid that is we've actually put a, a concrete curb that follows uh, the bottom of the fence. That way you can mow right up to the edge of it or weed whack right up to the edge of it and you wouldn't be destroying the fence. Uh, that way you'd have a clean area that you could maintain. The curb, would hold, the the curb would hold the water, would retain the water? No, the idea would be it would be at grade, so it would be following grade. The intention there is to see you could mow or Solid. trim without destroying the fence or beating up the face of the wall. So is it like five inches high or? It's not, a, it's flush with grade. It's, it's five it inches, high? it's five inches thick, so it's not going to go anywhere or settle, but I'm it's. Low. I'm on the bottom side of her hill, so I oh, get yeah, the wide all the stuff. <laughs> and the weeds. And the weeds. Yeah. yeah. Clover, you got clover now. So that's flat, that curb you're talking about is flat. Mm -hmm. It's not like what you told me we had. It's to that. keep you from having to weed whack around the posts and going under between the fence. It's kind of like the landscape curbs you see people sometimes pour now around their front of their house or around trees or whatever. It's just those kind of poured. It's not like a, it's not like a architectural, you know, um, cast one that pumps out of a machine or something. It would just be... You'd form it up like a sidewalk and pour it in place. The fence actually in that? No, it would be up above. Right, just right above. Okay. Why do they not have you can set it, it however how you how you want, but standard what? Sorry, I thought I. Just me jumping around here. So, usually, it's it's being held up a couple of inches. You don't want that to be that close to moisture or to weeds or anything else because it's the same thing as the. Sorry. It's the same thing as the uh, vines being on it. You know, any kind of foreign material that's sitting on a finish is going to degrade it over time. So, so how wide is that curb? We got it shown right now the same width of the of the uh, pile ashers. So two foot. It could modify. I mean, it could be short. It could be smaller. It could be bigger. But the idea was to make it as easy as possible to to install and deal with the maintenance issue. Is that in the estimate? Yep. Yeah, all the, that's included in all these estimates. Is that one image that actually have? Yeah, I was just seeing what yeah. estimate this was. That's that's similar there. I mean, that's that one's coming up a little bit. Well, that's like, like the one on the next one over the left. Side. That's, that a, like that's a parking lot curb. Oh, <laughs> uh, we can do that. Just add. Aaron, know, what's the difference in the cost grand. of between a seven foot and a ten foot per foot? Do you have that? Well, um, so the, the montage two at seven foot. Um, the fence itself was a hundred and eleven dollars and fifty eight cents a linear foot. Um, I have a 10 foot fence in here, so. Uh, it's in here somewhere. The, the Aegis one is $184 a linear foot. So it's, it's gonna be pretty close, but it's about $70 a linear foot for the extra three feet. How tall are these ceilings? <laughs> that tall. Um, no, there. It's a ten foot to the uh, acoustical tile. Fourteen. Ten. So it's nine foot, foot six to the soffit. <laughs> so a ten foot fence would basically be the height of this ceiling. I mean, a, a typical typical fence you see in a residential neighborhood is going to be seven foot or less. Probably six foot in most cases, but so I can scroll through these or go into them in any more detail anybody wants to see. But the idea is to show the difference in the the products. Um, if you for the ten foot fence, does the size of the pillar go up to ten feet also? Yeah, I got a drawing of it here. I can. 
Let me get to one of those here if I can navigate this. Um, so I, I had this drawing in the package to show as well before I get to the 10 foot, but here's a here's a seven foot post with the, with the um, fence following the grade. So what we could still do with the posts is they can be at, um, you know, follow the grade and then the, the fencing actually allows you to tilt it to a certain angle so you can still get it to follow grade and have the posts. But that, that's what that image was there to hopefully represent for everybody. Uh, this was another one just showing a straight fence with that. But uh, these piers, if you look in the details on all these, it's cast stone base, mas uh, masonry brick, and then I got soldier course. Some more masonry in a, in a cast stone cap. But this one right here was just trying to show, this is the Aegis fence, which is over there. This was the kind of the next tier up to show you that, you know, we got three divisions, but it also has these rings. It's just a little bit more aesthetics to it than just straight lines to, to help with that. Um, I'm getting to the 10 foot <laughs> as fast as I can scroll um, Eric. so this guy here is a 10 foot Aegis on grade Eric. Oh, sorry I'm sorry the on the far left is that is that a design under consideration this one here yes yeah that's the Aegis fence that's what all these are it's over there but it's <laughs> it's really it's almost the same fence as the montage 2 which you got selected but it has rings in it. That's the only difference in that and the far right is the rings. Pretty much, yeah. And I put these on here to the best examples that they had for their products. It but just looks like the top of that fence is different. It's hard to see. Um, what it is, this one has uh, finials on it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's finials are added to. Yeah, so a standard a standard price on one is a press tip, which, and with the montage or this, they're square unless the tip is compressed, and the, the compressed tip is the standard, which is the most economical. You can leave it square, and they can get finials that go on the top of each one as well. There's three or four different options. Um, I don't know the price exactly. I can ask them to get it on it, but I would assume it's... Uh, it's probably 10 or 15 dollars a foot or something like that to put the finials on yeah I mean each one of them is probably three or four bucks or something I think Kirby you said what their manufacturer what Oklahoma Tulsa Tulsa Oklahoma and the samples that we've got over on the countertop they do not show the ring um, they wouldn't provide those samples for whatever reason well they don't other than the standard Montage 2 and the standard Aegis, they consider them all custom order. So if you wanted to pay to have one custom made, they might make it for you, but but they're not going to have it off the shelf to get to you in, in the time time frame. But it's just a it's just an ornamental ring that goes in that same spacing, so the spacing would be the same. Uh, Here's a 10 foot with the masonry piers. Those pictures are the same because they were there, but I got a drawing of it. So that's a 10 foot masonry pier. So what I was showing there was increasing the cast stone base one more course because it got taller, um, doing some banding, doing some soldier coursing, back up to soldier coursing and banding, and then a larger <coughs> cast stone cap. But again, like like uh, like Herbie or, or John said, whoever it was, I mean, this is a 10 foot room, so that's a that's 10 foot tall. Uh, it's a pretty tall fence. I do, but <coughs> this is the detail. It's important to know because this goes back to everything else we were saying. If you go to a 10 foot pier there, you end up to be able to keep it in the yard at all. We modified the foundation to be four foot wide, but six foot six long. 
and instead of 12 inches deep it's now 24 inches deep the foundation and this thing requires twice as much rebar and everything else um, so best case scenario not that big of a deal other than being a lot more money but you may hit a bunch of areas where you don't got 36 inches deep without hitting rock and if you hit rock we have to well I know that's what I'm saying so the deeper you make this foundation the more you're getting into substantial excavation work so you'd have to hoe ram to take the rock out of that area to be able to put that foundation in um, so on top of it just being really tall it, it affects other things now here's a another 10 foot and this one shows the 10 foot with a there's a 10 foot fence next to a seven foot um, pilaster and a seven foot fence just to show the difference between them but if you were doing that if you're going with a 10 foot fence and a seven foot pilaster what we would actually do is put a post before the uh, another fence post before the pilaster to keep from transmitting this load onto that not to say it's good bad ugly but it shows you what the reality is so um, I um, you know it can be done but I, I, I don't think I would recommend um, going to that kind of scale but that's what it looks like um, so that's all the drawings and spreadsheets for the the different products that are on this this list here um, so I guess if there are any other questions or any clarifications I can attempt to do my best I have a question in some of the emails or in one of the emails that we were sent uh, I think on Friday that we looked over I'm not. Is that an email from me, or are you talking yeah, about from the plant you, board? You sent it to uh, the plant board, um, but it's the key information that we got to review, basically. Um, um, I don't honestly remember 100%, but I know they make the fencing in incremental steps. So depending on what the product is. Some of them, they don't have an eight-foot fence or a six-foot fence. Some of them, they do. I think that may be what that email was, was confirming what you could get and maybe these different options. Uh, I, I don't know 100%, but some of them you can get an eight-foot fence and a nine-foot, 10, 12. Some of them you can only get a six or an eight. Some you can only get a seven or a six. It depends on what, what product and what the their set production line is I think partially I think where the where the seven and ten came from is I think the original discussion was the brick base which would be three feet and then a seven foot fence on top of it and I think Miss Waterfield and some other people expressed they wanted the fence as tall as possible so I think the two options price were ten foot which would be the height of the original discussion to have the brick base plus a fence and then seven foot would take it down to basically what the height of the fence would have been without a brick base yeah, that's great. Does anyone have any more questions? I know, you, I know you've already said this, but I can't remember. That's fine. If they have a brick base, is the foundation everything going to be on the plant board side, or is it going to come over on our property? Yeah, so what we were, okay, what we were trying to do so was keep there. all the construction on the plant board's property that's what that's what we were trying to show at the last meeting okay. so what that would mean is the foundation that you didn't see would be right up on the property line below grade but depending on what the width of that foundation was the actual masonry wall would be set back 12 to 18 inches back from the actual visible property line on grade okay so there'd be but if we had there'd the be 18 inches the, the of mm -hmm. is that does it have a bigger or same size or smaller uh, base? Uh, what we've designed these around is four foot, so it would be three inches less. 
Can I ask you a question, Aaron? Kind of going back to the question Ms. Gray asked about on the reservoir, I think maybe you asked on the reservoir, on this fence from basically an estimate in terms of time to take down the old fence, pour the columns, put the fence in. What kind of timeline are you looking at from kind of start to finish? In the parking structure. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, it'll go in sequences for sure. The first thing that'll happen would be demolition. Um, so you'd be demoing the demolition of the parking structure. You'd be demoing the parking structure, mm -hmm. and unless we specified otherwise, they they'd be demolishing the fence at the same time. Because chances are that general contractor would have the same folks doing both those scopes of work to reduce the amount of cost to them. Um, unless they just bid on it and they found it to be advantageous to do it another way, but. I can't see that that would make sense. Um, so just demo on that. Um, just going off my head right now without without uh, looking at anything, but I'd say it's probably I'm going to qualify with this with an asterisk. I'll tell you right after I say it, but it's probably 30, 45 days to demo and take everything out. Worst case scenario. And then the build back. reasoning for that depends on what happens with the parking structure based on the utilities and how it comes down. And then once you tear down the fence to build back a new fence, how long is that? Would that take? Depends on if we got a masonry wall all the mm. way along, or if we got piers, or if mm. we just got a fence. If it's just a fence, they're going to come in. They'll tear out the old. They'll regrade it all. Get it to elevation. They'll go out with the commercial post hole digger dig all the dig all the footings and put the posts in I'd say that 1100 feet mm, that's probably at least a couple weeks of work for them to get all the posts in and then another crew will come in and just set the fencing between it so I'd say that could be probably probably a month worst case scenario to get the the fence in if it's just fence on grade and you're also going to do part of the this is the 1,100 feet that's under this initial contract. That's a long tanglewood. That's a long tanglewood reservoir and hay. And then there would be, I think, as I understand it from the board, then once the reservoir is completed, then there'd be another cost to put in the rest of the matching fence. Oh, right. And that's, and that's not in these estimates. That's that's not in this. Yeah. Right. But we don't have to go through all this. No, once it'll be. Yeah. Right. It would be a continuation of. When they come in to do demo, they're, they're, it depends on the season when they're coming and when we get them out there. But if it's before we get into winter and <coughs> rainy season here, they'll be able to do it without too much of a horrendous mess. But if they get into it and it's wet season, they're going to do it all at once because they're going to tear everything up if they keep going in and out. And they'd be paying multiple <coughs> subcontractors to be in there at the same time, which would not make sense. So. The only way they tear down sections and come back, build it, tear down the next, build it, is if we specified it that way. And if we did it, it would it would cost multiples more to do that. Because so what, what really costs the money is the labor. It's not the materials of any of this. It's so it's the labor. Fixing this from the foundation is going to come out the curve like we have to match up to you all. Because if you don't put anything in, it rains. My patio is going to be mud. Yeah, I mean, when they're doing construction, when they're doing construction, they're doing any demolition, they'll have to do, um, they'll have to do erosion control measures wherever they've, wherever they've demolished anything. If they don't put it in and it destroys something that's downhill of that, they'd be on the hook to replace it or fix it. So. But like, if I'm like, if, if the wall, I'm like two feet higher. My bed, my floor bed's back up to the wall, so I'm like two feet higher. Than your side. So when they take that wall out, what's going to happen? You're talking about the parking. Uh, no, I'm talking about, about the, the fence. Okay. Okay. In back of my house, I, right. I don't have the vines. I have all big <coughs> block that goes across. And like Adam shaking his head mm -hmm. over, it's like, okay, so they come and take that out, and I'm about two feet high or a foot high of land, and they are on the other side. 
And now I have a flower bed. Um, you know, it's all. Which which stuff. property are you on? Are you in the back corner? On the reservoir. Corner. Okay. Corner reservoir. Yeah, you got the tiered uh, retaining walls and stuff that go up. Landscaping retaining walls that go up. No, I'm I'm just flat straight across. If you walk to the back of her. On the parking garage. Down, no, yeah, you walk to the back of the parking garage and let and just get out of your car. You look right into. You. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where a parking garage is. A parking structure. Well, the parking structure. Just go on down. Put the drain tile in her garage. No, I, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Not. But there's a there's a planter bed that's off from yeah. that, that you got flowers and other yeah. stuff in. Well, it's it's just that I just built some extra walls to terrace my side, so when they come over, I mean I'm just wondering what's going to happen. Yeah, we're not we're not, not, we're not proposing to change grade. <laughs> We're, we're not proposing to change grade, but I mean, when they go to excavate to make for these footings, I mean, if it's a four by four footing, they're not going to be making a four by four footing. I mean, the hole is going to be a little bit bigger. It, it just is what well, it is when you do is construction. Wall out, and I'm a foot higher than them on that side. All my stuff's going to fall over there. I guess is what I'm asking. When they come and demolish, what's going to happen to my property? They it take that out, and all my beds are. Anybody? What what happens? She's kind of got double jeopardy in that oh, yeah. she's got the parking garage and yeah. the fence with a concrete wall. So when we take out the garage and tear out the whole fence, there's a window of time when you're vulnerable yeah. to heavy rains and stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, I I know exactly what you're saying. I understand it. It's it really comes down to we get the survey where the actual property line is, where everything is, and it, it it's going to determine what has to be done to either maintain property that isn't plant boards on the other side of that or if the plant board property line is on property that has neighbor stuff built on it already what's going to happen in those areas once that's determined then we can specify exactly what has to happen in special case areas if it, if it does happen but i know what you're talking about you got yeah, your area i know there's your area, and then there's the first on Tanglewood that has a wall that goes up between it. That's a pretty steep drop off as well. And then, so when you get those maps together, will be will we be able to identify the individual lots that we may have to do some more effort to keep to minimize the? We'll have a the pretty good. There? We already, I mean, depending on where the property line is, we got a, a decent idea already of where there might be some conflicts. But it depends on. So where we'll that be is. we'll be able to highlight those on the map. Yeah, I'd hope to, hope to be able to know that. This, this and this here are areas that we need to work between both parties and determine what we're doing there. So it's okay. either stuff gets regraded on one side or it's left as is or it's whatever that is. Because I don't okay. see things even growing on the so I need to get some advance notice to definitely move. So I got a grandmother rose bush on that fence, so it's sentimental. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sure somebody will let you know far in advance yeah. before somebody's coming. So, Aaron, I, I, I want to just make sure because I'm hearing something. I think I'm hearing something that might might be a concern. So, are you saying that because right now everybody that lives on the property line there feels like the fence is the property line? So, what I'm hearing you say is that that's maybe not accurate. And and so the to go along with that. I mean, is there potential for somebody to all of a sudden find out they've got two, le two feet less backyard, for example? Is that something that people need to be concerned about? Uh, or they could have two foot more or yard. Two foot more. There, you well, could have two I foot more yard, you yeah. could have two foot less yard or three foot less I, yard. I don't, I don't, I don't know that people I'm not saying that somebody's going to show out, come out there and start digging on your yard before you mm -hmm. know about it. But once we... That's the whole purpose of having the survey. I can't draw where a fence or a footing or anything else goes without knowing where I can go to and be on plant board property and miss the utilities. So our survey guys have already been out there. I know where the stakes are. I haven't seen it electronically, but I can guarantee you there's some areas where there's less property than you think there is. But so then on the map, we'll have a perimeter with the existing fence, a perimeter with the proposed new fence. There should be. In yes. some sense of what that changes. And will that be open to discussion? I mean, I, you know, because, I, I mean, as a. Absolutely. It's, it's just another data point. Yeah, yeah okay. it's just yeah. making sure we are all on the same page and we know what we're looking at. Right. I, I don't think I have to talk to any neighbors to know that if they find out they have even six inches less yard than they thought they had, it's going to be an issue. 
I understand, yeah. Yeah, so I will have to... I mean, we, the reason we wanted to do it really was because the plant board wanted to make sure they were on their property and not building on your property because you may have had property that was coming over on theirs and if they go and build this and everybody agrees and then you come out and survey to sell your house and that new fence is on your property then you're going to complain that the plant board built a fence on your property so it's best for both parties to <coughs> know where you're going and if, I mean, obviously, it's just the three of us here tonight, and nobody's taking votes because we're just asking for your all's input and comment. But I, I don't think there's any intent on behalf of the board to come in and take anybody's property. I mean, I mean, I think that'd just be one. I don't know what the remedies are, hands, but I think that's we just have to deal with that on a case by case basis. Well, Eve. my house was built, I found out that it was constructed in 1947, so I surely hope that, and we don't have much backyard anyway, I sure hope that error is on your side. The 10-inch fencing options that are shown are all shown with the rings. Is there a 10-inch, I'm sorry, 10-foot, I apologize, 10-foot, I think that's the email that this gentleman was asking me about and I think I was responding back that there wasn't there wasn't a fence of that type in 10 foot I'm not 100 percent sure I I've okay. looked at too many fences at the moment to remember exactly Same. but um, I'm not going to say 100% one way or another. I can look it up and get the answer pretty quick, but I don't think we have a montage in here that's 10 foot. And well, what, that's okay. I just didn't know if it's the 10 foot. What that kind of tells me is it probably didn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. We have to look. I got the cut sheets and stuff. I can look at them. Well, if there's no more questions, I'd like to thank everybody for their time. And Suzanne, is just a, a, a planning date. Is it reasonable if we have the, the final course of data from available to you guys by the 9th that we can plan on having some response from TNAI by the last week in June? By the last week in June? That sounds feasible. I mean, I have to get with everybody, but I okay. think that sounds If you could just get back to us and let us. Week of the 26th. Great. Well, thanks again for everybody's time. I really appreciate everybody's questions and the, the, the level of decorum tonight. Um, if there's nothing else, uh, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved. <laughs>